Hi, this is Mr. McGovern. This is the eighth video in the Level 2 Electromagnetism series where we're looking at moving an entire loop of wire through a field. So in the last video, um, we looked at moving just a single piece of wire through a magnetic field and we found that that creates a voltage. So the question is, if we have a complete loop with our uh, moving through the field, will that now have a, a closed circuit? And when we have a voltage in a closed circuit, that means current flows, that means electricity flows through the circuit. The answer to that is yes, mostly, because we're going to look at a situation where it doesn't flow. So that's what today's video is going to be about. We need to know which direction the current flows, and what are the situations where current does not flow through a loop. So here's a loop of wire, and it's moving to the um, right, and there's a small section of magnetic field there. So we go through the same process as when we're just looking at um, a small section of wire. So just think about that right-hand section of the wire. And think about electrons in that right hand section of the wire. They are moving to the right. So we get our left hand, we grip the electron, thumb pointing to the right, and we find the field around that electron is uh, circular. Below the electron is um, dots, as my fingers come out of the page. Above the electrons is crosses. Then we say, how does that interact with the external field, the white dots? And we're looking for opposites, opposite the white dots are my green crosses. And that's above the electron, so the electrons are forced upwards. And what that means is at the top of that section of wire we get um, negative charges, at the bottom section, because there's a separation of charge, we get positive. So the electrons are being pushed upwards, and they can now, because there's a loop, don't just flow to the top, but they can flow around the corner and, and start flowing in the circular motion around the loop in an anti-clockwise direction. So current, remember, is defined as the opposite to the flow of the electrons. Um, there's a historical reason for that, and so even though the electrons flow anti-clockwise, we can say in this loop our current is flowing clockwise. So that's the process we need to go through to figure out which way the current goes. So this is the situation where no um, current flows. If you look at the last one, you see that only the right-hand side of the loop is in the field, moving through the field, and the left-hand side of the loop is outside the field. If we have a situation where the whole loop is in a field and moving, we just do each section of the loop as, think of it as one wire, and we just do it one at a time and see what happens. So we've done the right hand side before, we, um, we grip it with our left hand, we know there's dots and crosses, dots below, crosses above, which means opposites attract, the electrons are forced upwards and around anti-clockwise, which means that the current would be going uh, clockwise, right? Then if we look at the top and bottom sections of the wire, let's just look at, say, um, the top section of the wire. The top section of the wire runs left to right, but the whole loop is moving towards the right. Okay, So the velocity is the same direction of the wire. Remember we need everything to be perpendicular. We need the velocity, we need the wire, and we need the magnetic field lines to be perpendicular in order to induce a voltage. So in this case, because the wire, just along the top, is going the same direction as the velocity, no voltage is induced. So now let's look at the left-hand side of the wire. It's also moving to the right. In fact, it's identical to the right, so we go through the same process if you want to. Use our left hand, we grip it, we find these crosses above, dots below, opposites attract, and the electrons are forced up, the same as on the right hand section of wire. But when they get to the top, the loop goes around to the right, so they flow the other way. They now flow clockwise. And so now you can see there's electrons flowing anti-clockwise, and then there's electrons flowing clockwise. And so those electron flows cancel out and no current flows at all. So this is a situation where even though you look at the individual sections, it looks like current's going to flow, everything cancels out and nothing happens. So in summary, when part of a loop moves through a magnetic field, we're going to get current. So that was the first uh, example. And the current flows opposite to the direction of the electron flow, so we can work that out. But if a full loop's moving through a field, no, uh, no current flows is meant to say. Not, not so current flows. And, and the reason why no current flows is because the two sides of the loop generate the opposing electron flows and they cancel one another out. 